Hey guys, Chase Kosterlitz here, and this video is the first of many Santa Paddle surf, foil, and race tutorials that you're going to be able to apply to your time on the water, whether you're a Santa Paddle racer, surfer, or foiler. These are basic technique mechanisms for paddling and turning that I originally put together a few years ago um, for stand-up paddle racing, but they apply to all these disciplines and really almost equally as important. A lot of people think if you're surfing or foiling, stroke technique doesn't matter, but if you want to catch a lot of waves, uh, downwind foil, um, have more fun on the water, prevent injury, you're going to want to implement these techniques. And it's really a deep dive from my time as a professional racer where I raced for about seven years and coached and I use a lot of these techniques in our stand up paddle surf camps in Nosara with Blue Zone and also now our foil camps and when I'm downwind coaching. So keep that in mind. These videos are focused on racing. I'm on a race board. At the time it was geared specifically towards racers but you are going to find this information really valuable and hope you guys enjoy it and give us a visit down in Osara. You can check out our website, bluezonesup.com or bluezonefoilsurf.com. Hope to see you on the water. Send us an email and we'll be in touch. So this is the ultimate deep dive into hip movement. So we're going to go over the different types of hip movement that we use when paddling and then how to get those hips engaged in functionally producing power and speed so you can paddle longer, stronger, and faster. So here we have a view of myself on the beach and I want you to just look and see the two hip movements that we have here. So the first is a rotational hip movement. And this is a movement that we classically associate with using the hips is this rotational side to side movement and it's an important movement but you are going to want to combine that hip movement with what we call a hinging movement so we have the rotational movement that i just showed you and then we have a hinging movement which is a lot more apparent and finding more and more a lot more effective in producing power to generate speed to paddle longer and stronger so this is the hinging movement the rotational movement is similar to if you were sticking your hand out to shake someone's hand and you reach your hand and you can go ahead and do this as i'm talking you reach your hand as far forward as possible and it won't go any further now how do you get more reach you rotate like I just did in the video, and that's gonna, your hand should be extending forward more if you're rotating from the hips. That is that rotational movement. Now this hinging movement is as if you were sitting down in a chair. So you're dropping your hips back, like you're sitting your butt down in a chair, but the key is that you're not bending your knees. Now your knees can be slightly bent, you don't want your legs locked out, but you're not bending your knees to get that movement. You're dropping your hips back as if you were sitting down into a chair but you couldn't bend your knees to sit into the chair and and i want to stress you don't want to be locking out your knees but this is the hinging movement coming back okay so i'm going back and forward and you're going to see as we go through this video the different elements of that hinging movement now you might be asking what is chase doing on a skateboard with a land paddle this is a great demonstration of what is going on when we paddle and I found it helped me a lot when learning to engage my hips is to understand that when we put the paddle in the water, the paddle is staying in a static position in the water and we're bringing our board and our body up to the paddle in the same way that I stick the land paddle in, watch the land paddle, it's not moving, watch my hips. I'm bringing myself up to the land paddle. The same thing is going on in the water. Now, we might have a little slippage because we get cavitation and air bubbles, and that's when we're not being efficient. So you wanna be efficient in that, but look how I'm bringing my hips forward to bring myself up and past the paddle. So I'm putting the paddle in, it's static, and then I'm bringing the board 
in my body up to the static paddle. The same thing is going on in the water. And if you can understand that, that is going to help you engage your hips and use your hips for power and not your arms. One of the single most important things you can do to go faster and to paddle better is to get your hips engaged and to not use your arms. So think about your arms like jello. Don't let your arms do any work. And we talk about doing a drill where you very loosely grip the paddle and you really try to get those hips engaged and visualize the paddle is going into the water. It is not, you're not pulling the paddle through the water. You're pulling yourself up to the paddle, just like I did in the skateboard video. And that's going to help you hopefully visualize that and engage your hips more. Here we have a view of me paddling from above. And I really like this view because it'll show you how much hip movement we really have going on. So I want you to look, and I'm gonna play this forward, look in the middle of the board here, you're gonna see my handle, okay? And I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see that. That's my handle. Keep an eye on that black handle throughout this section of the video. It's disappearing and then it's appearing. So I'm gonna slow this down. The handle is gone. As my hips come back, my hips come forward. You can see the handle. Back, the handle disappears, okay? And a lot of times when someone's paddling, it's hard to see all the hip movement going on. I'm gonna play this forward nice and slow so you can see the amount of movement going on. And I'm gonna sort of go back to that so you can see it again and really get an idea for the amount of hip movement that's going on throughout the stroke okay so this is slowed down look at that handle look at the amount my hips are moving i'm driving back from that hinging motion and getting the power from my hips our hips are the biggest joint in our body they're the most well protected the strongest part of our body as far as joints and our legs and we want to be using that to our advantage so really understand that hinging motion hopefully that overhead view gave you a good shot at what is actually going on the amount of movement that is going on from that hinging motion so now i have a side view and i want to show this to you because it's just another look at the hips you can't see nearly as much movement as that ab that above angle but the same thing is going on and look at my hips they're driving back and now as i come forward look at what my hips are doing they're coming forward if i'm not bringing those hips forward and pointing my pelvis forward, then I have no room to go backwards. A lot of times, some people, they stay engaged back with their hips back, and then if you're not bringing them back forward during the recovery, then you're not gonna have the, the room in the hip movement to drive backwards. So during my recovery, I'm bringing the hips forward, and now you'll see my blades in the water, and now the hips are driving back. And now I want you to pay attention to the exit. I'm initiating the exit as my bottom hand hits my thigh. All right, more or less that's where you wanna be going and you wanna check out our technique breakdown videos to see some examples of getting that exit. But talking about the hips here, the bottom hand is hitting the thigh. My hips are now slowly starting to come forward. It's actually happening very fast so it's hard to see in the video but my hips are actually the mechanism that is sort of popping my paddle out from the exit and initiating my recovery and bringing my hips forward as I come to the catch and then driving back again. So my hips are actually leading my paddle, even though it kind of looks like my paddle is leading the hips, my hips are shooting forward as I come to the catch and now I'm driving back again. I know this is a lot of information to absorb, so definitely play back these last couple scenes and understand that the hip movement and visualize what is going on. Because the next thing I wanna, wanna share with you is that not only is our, are our hips producing power during the power phase, but it's producing a rhythm and a momentum on our board. 
And what I mean by that is our board is decelerating during the entire recovery phase. So I'm accelerating through the power phase. It's pretty clear that the board is accelerating. But then once I release that paddle, the board is going to slightly decelerate. We have a little bit of glide, but because of the friction of the board in the water, we're going to decelerate. And as I come up here and as my hips shoot forward, the board will actually slightly accelerate again. And I don't know, you can almost see it right there. Okay. I don't know if you see that little bit right there. Okay. And the board is accelerating and it's actually been shown in a study with a uh, high kneel canoe where they put a bunch of cameras and an accelerometer on a paddler and it showed that they decelerated during the entire recovery phase except for the last split second during the recovery phase and before the paddle was actually in the water the boat accelerated again. Now it didn't accelerate faster than it was going during the power phase, but after having the deceleration the whole time the paddle is out of the water, decelerating right here, decelerating, and then right here, just before the paddle's in, the board is accelerating again and it's getting that from your hips shooting forward. So even though your paddle's not in the water, you're actually shooting forward and that's why it's important also to get that forward and backwards motion. You don't want to be doing that motion just for the sake of doing it because you're going to be burning energy unnecessarily. The, the movement is functional in that you're shooting your hips forward so that you have an area and a mobility to drive them backwards. Because if I'm not getting my hips forward, if they just stayed where they are now, I am not going to have as much room to drive back. And it's just, it's very interesting that it shows in the canoe study, and I suspect, and I can almost see it in this video, that our hips driving forward during the recovery phase is actually helping to keep that board accelerating once again, even though our paddle is not actually in the water. Okay, so I'm driving my hips back. Now my hips are shooting forward and then I'm driving them back again. And you can't see it nearly as much as you could in that overhead view. But we talked about the hinging motion and the rotational motion. The rotational motion is really hard to see here and you're gonna see it a little bit in the next section of this video, but realize there is some slight rotation going on. But I've found that the most benefit can be derived from the hinging motion. But you want to do a combination of the two and the exact combination is going to depend on the paddler, their skills, and what is comfortable for them. So test out the rotation, test out the hinging, and find what is most comfortable. But realize that the hinging is going to be producing a fair amount of power for you and is something that I found very useful and a lot of other top paddlers are employing this hinging motion. So in the next frames we are going to see a front view and what I want to point out here is everything that I've talked about throughout this video but also what you can see a lot more clearly at this angle is that my knees are not bending so even though I have a lot of body movement, my hips are driving, my knees, I'm not bending up and down. So if you're standing in, 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 uh, in a room and you go to sit down in a chair, you, you don't, and you can even try this as I'm talking or after, try sitting down just by bending your knees. It's kind of awkward and it doesn't feel very natural. So you want to be sitting down by driving the, those hips backwards. And you can see in this video straight on, yeah, my knees are bending a little bit, but they're not, it's not what's producing my up and down movement. That up and down hip drive is coming from my hips hinging backwards. And I'm driving throughout the power phase with my hips. So I know, uh, like I already mentioned, this is a lot of information, but it's super critical that you get your hips involved. If there's one thing you can do, it's get your hips involved. Relax your arms. Think about bringing yourself 
up to that static blade while maintaining connection, not letting the blade, you're not pulling your arm through the water. You want to keep that bottom arm relaxed. And, and like I said, you can watch our, our technique breakdown videos to get more information on that. But this video, I wanted to really just zero in on the hips because the tech, our techniques are so complicated and there's so much going on it'd be an hour-long video if I try to do everything at once so watch this video again concentrate on what I'm talking about maybe watch what my hips are doing more and then try to engage your hips when you're paddling relax your arms lightly grip your paddle visualize bringing yourself up to the paddle that's stationary in the water in the same way that a cross-country skier they're planting their poles and then they're driving themselves up to the poles by thrusting their hips it's a very similar motion that's what you want to be visualizing getting those hips engaged if you can have someone film you and then you can really look and compare yourself to this video and say okay I, I have good hip movement or okay I'm not moving my hips at all and that's really going to help you and then if you want you can send us the video and we will do a full video stroke analysis and break it down for you but at the very least practice engaging, engaging your hips and then film yourself you can even attach a GoPro or have someone film you with an iPhone from the beach and then you'll see pretty pretty easily if you have hip movement similar to what I'm doing in this video I hope this helps you guys practice on the water get those hips engaged and thanks for watching